Thank you. Recognize the member for Beaches East York. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And um, we all, I'm sure we all would like to be eating lunch, but we are now here and dealing with a very important issue. And um, I'll start by saying, um, giving you a bit of a quiz. Stegosaurus, Triceratops, Raptors, Conservative government. And what would these all have in common? And if you started, if your answer was dinosaurs, you are absolutely correct, and you will get a prize from me later. But um, you may get a prize if you actually get on board the rest of the world and accept the fact that we are in a climate emergency and it needs to be dealt with, and we are leaders and we are here to lead, supposedly. But what I've seen for the past few weeks is extraordinarily games being played. And I'm used to this. I was at City Hall with some of the members here, and there was the shiny bauble, always the shiny bauble over here, distract, deflect. And I believe that our, um, the House leader even said, uh, accused us of having, uh, what was it, a desperate move to distract. These are the words of the House leader, that we um, over here on this powerful side of the House uh, we are just using this as a desperate move to distract. Well, what is, what is before us and has been before us uh, in Ontario is an RCMP investigation, criminal investigation. But are we talking about that? Are we talking about preserving our green belt? No, we are talking about a million other things just to distract the public. And you, the House Leader, for him to say that, they're masters at distracting and deflecting and not doing our job to protect Ontarians, which is what um, this idea from the member of, uh, a marvelous member from Orleans had to bring forward. And that's what Ontarians want to see. We are in a climate emergency, and what are we doing about it? We're fiddling while Rome is burning. We have seen, uh, and we've been warned by the Financial Accountability Officer, by the Auditor General, by a million experts, with a ton of reports sitting on desks, sh shelves collecting dust. Um, we, we commission them, we ask for them, and they get delivered with powerful, uh, important facts for us to to read and learn and, and heed the advice. And what do we do? We let them sit on a shelf. And instead of actually doing strong climate action. So if this government actually had a, uh, an environmental plan, climate action plan, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be, we would be actually outdoing the work. The work would be done to protect Ontarians instead of just arguing back and forth here like a ping pong game. But no, this government thinks their solution to solve, solving the climate emergency is electric vehicles. Okay, that's helpful, but you haven't secured the supply chain uh, and you haven't engaged Indigenous communities. Um, and you have a, a report, the Climate Change Impact Assessment Report, that got released in the dark of the night uh, stealthily and sits on a shelf somewhere in a park that um, was already a park and just had a name on it. And um, that's, that's the answer. That is the answer for Ontario's climate emergency. That is how we're going we're gonna to keep Ontarians safe. And you know, a while ago, I brought forth the private member's bill that I thought was pretty benign for climate action, and many, many, many of the members over there supported it, said they did, and I believe them, uh, on uh, flooding awareness and emergency preparedness. And what happened? What happened? Uh, uh, even the environmental minister at the time was, was on board, but then at the last minute, the rug got pulled out from underneath because climate action does not matter to this government. And that is going to leave us woefully, woefully behind. And if they're worried about money now, we have been warned about the high, high cost of inaction. And you've seen that already with this government. They're so worried about this pollution pricing, but yet 
They don't think twice about blowing money in court, fighting things they can't win and that are ridiculous. Again, dinosaur mentality. They don't think about um, you know, cancelled projects, all the renewable energy projects. Why are we not focusing in on renewables and conservation? It's not rocket science. Come on. Education as well, but conservation, which, which you would know creates green jobs, creates sustainable jobs. I've encouraged you in the past to grow a spine and to, and to get behind strong, brave, and bold um, measures. I've offered, uh, I've offered you transplants from my spine, but you have, not, you have not taken me up on that. You just continue to, to be in the dark, heads in the sand, dinosaur mentality, and you're not leading. You're not leading. We could be doing strong um, retrofits, deep energy retrofits of our buildings and our houses. We could be uh, investing and in, in subsidizing, uh, giving out incentives for heat pumps. As the member, the entertaining member from Temescoming, uh, mentioned insulation, energy audits of, of your homes. This is the way to save Ontarians money, if you really care. Because you know what? We can't tackle affordability on a non-livable planet, right? And the member from Guelph mentioned this morning that we can deal, and we should be dealing with the climate emergency at the same time as the affordability crisis. They are part and parcel, together, connected. They are not separate. They are not in silos. And if you think that, <laughs> I can't even say. I'll just, the word dinosaur just keeps coming to me here <laughs> um, repeatedly. So you, have, you, ha you don't have a plan. You have reports, this climate change impact assessment sitting on um, a shelf. We have heard nothing, nothing about it. What was inside it? Was it that damning, that alarming, that you can't reveal? Why not share it? Why commission it? Why say it's one of your key planks for your, for your uh, climate action and what, when it's, it's, it's collecting dust, as we said? And the other thing the House leader mentioned was um, the radical environment minister in, in Ottawa. And, you know, if that's his definition of radical, I mean, I don't think... Uh, super radical. I don't think that environment minister is undergoing a RCMP criminal investigation. I mean, I would think that's pretty radical. And, um, yeah, I, you know, I just like the shiny baubles that's been thrown around. Order. It's ridiculous. And, um, yeah, Order. I mean, yeah, the history is taking care of, of, of people and protecting them from Order. what's coming down the pipe. It's a $9 billion price tag on the B.C. floods. It's $5 billion in uh, Alberta. What, that's coming to uh, Ontario. We're going to be faced with extreme heat. We're going to have deaths, and we're doing nothing to prevent it. What are we doing? We're, we're just playing shiny baubles. Well, the renewable energy contracts would have helped, right? And so with conservation and education and strong leadership, which we don't have, I'm running out of time, but I do have an amendment. Uh, um, well, before I forget, I, I, do, I do want to, I, I had enough actually of the dinosaur mentality, and I just really hope um, 2026 people wake up and, and, and uh, look for real leadership, because we don't have that right now with our government. Um, so I have an am amendment, <laughs> and I would like to amend the amendment by adding, at the end, apostrophe, apostrophe S, families. All right, so that's apostrophe S, families, is the amendment. Okay, and I'm going to send that with Paige Martell, who's getting a great education today. <laughs> Ms. McMahon is moving an amendment to the amendment by adding at the end apostrophe S families. 
A member for Beaches East York has the floor. So I'm just saying it again. Oh, okay. So that um, I hope you will support my amendment and uh, and also support uh, the member from uh, marvelous member from New Orleans. Or Orleans. <laughs> Orleans. Yeah. Because we, we actually care about affordability, but we also care about the climate emergency, which are part and parcel together. As we mentioned, you, we can't tackle affordability on a non-livable planet. And the sooner you all wake up to that, I mean, t your residents are telling you, you're, you're just not listening. And, and you know what? It's, you're wasting money on everything you've done. You're wasting money on those renewable contracts you canceled. And you say you're open for business? You gave away, you turned businesses away and companies away. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.